I'd like to welcome everybody. It looks like we have a very, very international crowd tonight. And a very, very big crowd. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, a very topical subject with the volatility we've had in today's markets. And uh, it's also one of my favorite subjects. Unusually, though, I'm not the one actually given the presentation. We have a guest speaker today. So, anyway, I'll be doing, uh, I will be, have the pleasure of reading the um, legal disclaimer. Let's get right to that. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a rep recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Thomson Reuters and Option Club shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software trading strategies or any information provided in connection with the company. So uh, we got through that. Thanks for that. Um, how many people here are, uh, are a member of Option Club? Anyone? Okay, there's a few yeses. I don't know if that's you can hear me or you're answering the new question, but looks like we have a few, quite a few people uh, here as part of Option Club. Um, if you're not familiar with Option Club, it's a little, it's a group that was put together by Chris Smith, who I've become friends with. Um, I'm, I very much like his presentation style, and I really like the fact that he's uh, chosen to talk about one of my favorite topics today, which is the RMO. So um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring him on here, have him go through the presentation in the class tonight, and um, join me in welcoming, welcoming him to the event tonight. Chris, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. You're coming through really well for me. Good. Well, um, let's jump past the disclaimer because disclaimers are no fun. And there's more disclaimers. But uh, the bottom line is today I'm going to talk to everyone uh, in an educational uh, type presentation. And um, you should not consider anything that I say as a recommendation to buy or sell. But you need to do your own homework and your own due diligence. Um, here's a little quote that I pulled out uh, off of Investopedia. This is John Bogle, who's the founder of uh, Vanguard Group. And, um, and, and you know, he talks a little bit about uh, trend trading. But the idea that we're going to talk about today is we're not going to try to pick the top of the market, and we're not going to try to pick the bottom of the market, but we're going to try to recognize trends within the market. And the problem that I've been watching for the last, geez, over 10 years now, since uh, 2000, uh, is uh, that investors, especially those who are inclined to buy and hold, have just been getting hammered uh, during these uh, bear markets and market corrections. And, um, you know, we, lo we love when the market advances, but we tend to have a very difficult time when the market changes direction. So we've been experiencing a lot of volatility in the markets, and it's been compounded by the fact that a lot of the traditional safe havens that investors would flock to, things like real estate uh, and uh, maybe treasuries or CD accounts, uh, those are depressed either as an, you, know, you know, the asset is depressed such as real estate, or the, the yield that you're getting on your bank CDs, they're, they're minuscule. Um, and we still have some uh, securities that have been appreciating, things like gold, but you have to start being concerned if you're a, an investor versus a trader that there's a great deal of speculation that's going on there and, and that that may perhaps be uh, subject to some form of bubble as well. So the question is, you know, how do how do we manage this? Um, now I, I pulled these snapshots off uh, just uh, off the Yahoo Finance board, probably um, well it's back in April earlier this year, and all I wanted to do is kind of demonstrate what a buy and hold investor has been experiencing since the turn of the century, basically starting in 2000, um, and it's it's been quite a ride. Now, as 
as awful as that looks, as of April, if you had bought the S&P 500, this is the spider that we're looking at here, if you bought that back in January of 2000, you're down about 8% as of uh, April 25 of this year. Um, not too bad, uh, not great, but not too bad. But what you really need to pay attention to is that in order to have that 8% loss, uh, you had to endure a two-year drawdown that totaled about 47% of capital. That's a really tough thing to uh, uh, stomach as a buy and hold uh, type investor. Uh, but as bad as that was, uh, in 2008, we saw a 56% drawdown on the, on the S&P 500, and that one only took 16 months. So that was very fast, very vicious, and... Um, you know, we, re we recovered from both of those, but it also prevented us from seeing the kind of capital appreciation that most investors desire and uh, even expect, especially over a long period like 10, 11 years. So uh, we're going to take a look at some things that we can do to improve upon things. Now, some would say, well, you know, the idea is that you really just need to have a managed portfolio. And um, here's a Fidelity Magellan over the same period of time. And uh, you know, as opposed to the 8% loss on the S&P 500, Magellan uh, is showing a 42.8% loss. Uh, you know, and that's just based off of the, the price uh, chart there. So again, kind of a tough ride if, if you're an investor. But uh, we're going to see if we can provide you guys with some insight and tools that may help you weather the storm a little bit better. Um, so today's goal is we're going to look for a method that allows you to pursue stock market appreciation while avoiding those significant capital drawdowns. Now, here's the agenda. And I'm going to try to make our way through all this within the uh, scheduled hour. Uh, we need to talk a little bit about trend following. And we're going to review the recent bear markets and market corrections with the eye of a, of a trend trader. And then we'll talk about the RMO and we'll talk about how the RMO might be used to protect capital during those types of markets. So trend following is uh, basically a, you know, the objective here is not to pick the top or, or to pick the bottom, but to identify a trend and then ride the trend. We want to trade in uh, concert with the prevailing trend of the market. If the market's trending higher, we want to be long. If the market's trending lower, we either want to be out of the market or probably leaning to the short side. So we want to trade consistent with the prevailing trend. And we need to recognize that trends uh, can be very long term. These trends can last years. So when you take a trade as a trend trader, you potentially could be in that trade for many months, even years, which isn't a bad thing. So what we want to do as a trend trader is we want to identify and then enter the primary trend, but we want to do it at a relative point of safety. And what we need to recognize is that as a market is engaged in a trend, it will move in the direction of the trend and then pull back. And if we enter the trade at a point of extension where the market has extended itself in the direction of the trend, and then as we enter our trade, it pulls back, that's going to make it a little bit difficult for us because we're going to start our trade out early with an unrealized loss, or we may get whipsawed out of the position or stopped out of the position and actually incur a loss. So we want to enter the market in the direction of the prevailing trend and we want to do it at a point of safety. And that's the basic concept that we're going to uh, be dealing with as a trend trader. Let's see, okay, next slide's up. 
So the uh, the idea here, here is is that we're going to identify the trend. We're not going to pick tops. We're not going to pick bottoms. Um, it, but what we're going to do is we're going to generally be able to capture the majority of the trend. And this will work in a bullishly trending market. And it's going to work in a bearishly trending market. Uh, where you're going to have difficulty is with a uh, consolidating market. Uh, so during periods of uh, consolidation uh, or sideways trading where there's a fair amount of volatility, where there's you know, up and down action, uh, trend following systems tend to generate uh, buy and sell orders in quick succession. And you may experience what we call a whipsaw where you're triggered in long and then shortly thereafter you're triggered in short. So you're getting in and getting out. And that tends to be a little bit frustrating, and it also tends to erode the capital a little bit. So that's the uh, you know the trend following in a nutshell. And the reason it was important for us to discuss that is because the RMO is essentially a trend following system. So we need to kind of know what we're going to get ourselves into. So let's take a look at the recent market. Uh, uh, sell-offs that we've been having to deal with. And we need the chart to come up. So this is just a bar chart of the spider. And it goes back, I think, into the early 1990s uh, through to the present time. And the, uh, you know, the bottom line here is that, let's see, I'm going to try to get my well, actually, I, I think I've got slides set up to handle that. Um, but the, the bottom line here is that we really like when the market advances higher as an investor. These were very good times. You know, the first uh, advance that we're looking at that was the what we now call the dot-com bubble. Uh, but the reality is, is that that bull market lasted for many years, uh, most of the, the decade. And uh, a lot of money was made during those years by people buying stocks. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, once that top came in, a lot of those profits were, were given back. Um, and, and after that, that bear market, uh, we had another rally. And we've had a, a rally since then as well. So you know, we've been looking at three rallies here. But the problem is, and what you saw earlier in the, in the uh the slide as of April, the spider was actually showing an 8% loss for this time period. Even though we had these magnificent bull runs, a lot of the profits were given back during the corrections. So we really want to avoid giving back the money that we make during the market advances. And so the, that's where we're going to kind of focus our energies here, is capturing what we can call the bull zones or the bullish zones, or you could call it the green zone or whatever whatever uh, works for you. And then we want to avoid trading or at least getting long during these periods of uh, market correction. That's the entire goal in a nutshell. So here's a simple little trading system that I developed and this is simply a moving average crossover system which is a trend following system and the idea here was not so much to get out of the market but it was to identify the times when I should be playing offense as an investor namely building long capital positions buying stocks and when I should be playing defense maybe taking some profits, tightening up my stops, or doing other things to protect capital. And uh, you know, over the long run, this simple system has uh, a fair degree of effectiveness. Now, you're not going to, you know, it's not going to call the tops, and it's not going to call the bottoms. And what I did is we've got some red boxes there, and those red boxes highlight where the system is wrong or where the system has you in the market when you'd prefer to be out 
and when it has you out of the market when you might otherwise prefer to be in. Now, that's just the nature of a trend following system. You're, you're going to miss the tops and you're going to miss the bottoms if you're following the system in, in a disciplined manner. So the, you, know, you have to get comfortable with that, that concept. Now, can you improve upon this? In other words, can you develop a, a system that's more efficient? And, uh, and the answer is probably yes. Um, and, and one of the systems I think is uh, pretty effective is, is the Rahul Mohinder Oscillator trading system, which uh, I know uh, Jeff uh, likes it, and it's one that I, I like to use myself. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. Now, the Rahul Mohinder Oscillator we just refer to it as RMO because it's really hard to keep saying Rahul Mohinder Oscillator. And um, but the RMO is is a trading system developed by uh, Rahul Mohinder, who is pretty well known uh, in India uh, and has spent some time uh, commentating on CNBC and CNN uh, over there. And Equus has acquired the rights to the RMO. And it is now included as a standard uh, feature of Metastock. So if you already own Metastock and you're, you've got a current version of the software, you already own the system. Uh, so this uh, presentation, you, you'll be able to apply everything without having to uh, acquire anything else. And that's true whether you own the end-of-day version or you have the professional real-time version of the software. Um, so what is the RMO? Uh, the system is comprised of four um, indicators, and we're going to review each one of them. Uh, the RMO itself is the is an oscillator uh, that's displayed as a histogram on the chart, and it will uh, help us identify the primary market trend. Uh, there are two other oscillators that we're going to talk about, and those are called Swing Trade 2 and Swing Trade 3. And then there's a fourth uh, indicator uh, that comes with the system called the exit swing signal. Now we're not going to talk about uh, the exit swing signal today because it's, you know, it's just not relevant to, to what we're trying to achieve. Um, but we do need to pay attention to the, the first three. So we also get... Uh, in, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about expert advisors. Uh, we, we will see the template. Uh, there are also explorations, but we're not going to use those either. And um, let's get the template up. So what we have here is we've got our template. And the first uh, indicator at the top is a green, bright green histogram. Now the bright green histogram, that is the RMO. And uh, that, that, as a standard feature of the template, will always reside at the top. And then we have a window that contains two histograms, swing trade, one, or swing trade 2 and Swing Trade 3, and they're superimposed one on top of the other. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to determine you know, where each one is at, when they're superimposed like that, but the really nice thing is that um, we're not even going to have to worry about looking at the actual histograms themselves. Now, below here is uh, swing or the uh, exit swing signal. Like I said, we don't need to worry about this for today's discussion, but that's where it resides. And then from there, we we've got our price bars, and you'll notice that some of the bars are colored blue, some are red, and then we've got some blue and red arrows on there. And we'll talk about what all of that means. Uh, the volume uh, is pretty self-explanatory. There really is no unique functionality there, but it's nice to see the volume. And then we have at the very bottom here what we call the ribbon. And the ribbon will either be green and labeled as RMO bullish, or it will be red and labeled as RMO bearish. And let's get this one up. Okay. So the RMO itself is, you know, this uh, very brightly colored uh, histogram, and 
what's really nice about this system is there is absolutely no subjective interpretation required. We're not going to look at the shape or the, the curve or, or any aspect of the histogram except for one. And that aspect is uh, what I highlighted here with this red horizontal line, and that's the zero line. If the RMO is above the zero line, then we are in a bullish primary trend. And if it's below the zero line, we are in a bearish primary trend. That is the extent of the interpretation. Is it above or is it below? And, uh, and that's going to tell us what the primary trend of the market is. And all of the other subjective interpretations that you might be able to come up with really are not necessary. The uh, next indicator, let's see if we can get it up. Here we go. There it is. So now here's the swing trade two and swing trade three. Uh, swing trade two is the pink histogram, and it is a uh, what we can call a medium uh, term trend, and uh, the purple histogram measures a longer term trend. Now the important thing about swing trade two is we're going to want to know whether it's above or below its zero line as well. We don't really care so much about the, the purple because what the purple is, is there for is to provide us with uh, a, a crossover. In other words, as that pink crosses above and crosses below, it's going to generate um, some trade uh, uh, signals for us to pay attention to. Can't get the slides to move. Maybe if I click it one or two more times, it'll help me out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're back to looking at the full template here. And what we've got is this green um, RMO bullish ribbon down at the bottom. Sometimes it's red. And the ribbon is going to change from bullish to bearish and back again in sync with the RMO histogram up here at the top. So this is all connected. It's all programmed into, into the system. So you don't even need to look at the histogram. You can just look down here at the bottom and look at the ribbon. Are, are we in a, a, a green bullish phase or are we in a red bearish phase? Um, now, we also have these price bars, and the price bars are tied, the color of the price bars are tied to swing trade two. So if swing trade two is above its zero line, you're going to get blue price bars, which are bullish, and if it's below the zero line, you're going to get red bars, which is a bearish indication. And then you have these arrows, and the arrows are triggered by crossovers of swing trade two over swing trade three. So as swing trade two crosses above swing, swing trade three, you're going to get a blue bullish arrow. And if uh, swing trade two crosses below swing trade three, then you get the red bearish uh, indicator. And that's pretty much the, the system in, in a nutshell right there. Now, you need some trading rules. And I'm going to review these fairly quickly because we're not going to talk today about really trading the RMO, although I'm going to show you exactly where you can go to, to, to learn a little bit more about that. Um, so we can use the RMO not just in the context of this trading system, but we can use it on its own as a standalone indicator. And... Uh, and we can use that on pretty much any underlying security, so long as it's a, a security prone to trending. You know, we may not be able to use it as well in, on things like, uh, you know, perhaps if you if you guys trade VIX or you know these mean reverting type uh, averages. I don't know how well it would work on something like that, but for you know your your garden variety stocks and uh, equity funds and that sort of thing, forex. Uh, the RMO should be a very, very effective uh, tool 
for uh, trend trading purposes. Now the rule set that I'm going to run through quickly is based upon the same rules published by Equus. So if you're familiar with the system, this is going to be a little bit of review. Uh, but if uh, this the system is not particularly uh, familiar to you, um, you know, follow along. But you know, there's a little bit more detail in, involved in what what you're going to see here, but not a lot. It's it's a pretty straightforward system, and trust me, when it comes to trading, simpler is usually better. Now, let me get rid of this green arrow here. All right. So if the RMO is above the zero line, so we've got the the, the green ribbon, and uh, it's it's considered to be in a bullish zone, and that's measuring the primary trend. So we always want to trade in concert with that primary trend. And we're going to want to avoid getting short the market or get, being bearish when we have a bullish zone, a bullish RMO. Uh, and we're going to want to focus primarily on long uh, type positions. Uh, on the other hand, if it's below the zero line, we're in what's called a bearish zone. And we want to avoid getting long the market and maybe we look for some short positions. What this rule does is it keeps us trading in a direction that's consistent with the prevailing trend. Now, at the Option Club, one of the most common things I see people doing is they start losing money and they can't figure out why. And typically what, what's happened is that the markets changed trend. They were doing all right. They were, they were making some money. The market changed direction and they just kept trading the same thing that they were trading before and it wasn't working anymore. And the, and the reason it wasn't working is because they were on the wrong side of the trend. So right here, rule number one is going to help us to prevent from jumping on to the wrong side of the trend. Now, the RMO, though, is not what we call a trigger point. It's, it tells us what the trend is and it tells us the type of trade that we can uh, that we're allowed to, to take, but it's not going to trigger us into the trade. Swing Trade 2 looks at a medium term trend, and it is the pink oscillator. Uh, when Swing Trade 2 is above the zero line, it is in what we would call a bullish zone, and it's we're, we're going to get those blue bars. And we're going to look for bullish opportunities. And when it is below the, the zero line, we're going to get red bars, and we're going to look for opportunities to get short. Now what we want is we want agreement between the RMO and Swing Trade 2. So in order for us to take a bullish trade we need both the RMO and Swing Trade 2 to coincide. They both need to be bullish. If we want to get bearish we would need both RMO and Swing Trade 2 to be bearish. So then we need to identify the entry point. Now I said earlier that what we want to do as a trend trader is to enter the market at a relative point of safety. Now RMO and Swing Trade 2, they're not going to give us the relative point of safety. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at Swing Trade 2 in connection with Swing Trade 3 and we're going to look for a cross. We're going to look for across the medium term trend, which is Swing Trade 2, over or below swing trade three. It's a moving average crossover essentially. And when that happens, it's going to generate a red or a blue arrow. And the red arrows will be triggering um, a, a bearish trade, and the blue arrows will trigger a bullish trade. Now, these trade entry signals. They're only good if they are consistent with rules one and two. So in other words, if you get a bullish arrow, you get a blue arrow, it is only a valid signal if the RMO is in a bull phase and swing trade two is in a bull phase. So everything has to line up. You need to get three dots in a row. Now, Stuart's asking, what are the blue bars all about? And the blue bars are just being triggered by swing trade two. If swing trade two is above the zero line, 
the bars are going to turn blue and that tells you that you have have permission to take bullish trades and if they turn red uh, that means that you are in a bearish phase and, and you need to limit yourself to uh, uh, bearish trades or getting short uh, a position. So here's uh, the simplified version of the, of the rule set and basically you need for a bullish trade you need a green ribbon you need blue bars and you need a blue buy arrow and that is a valid trade setup for whatever the underlying security happens to be uh, the criteria do not need to occur on the same bar you can have the uh, RMO turn uh, bullish and then later the bars turn bullish and then later the arrow come, come into play uh, the bear trade the, the three uh, criteria are you need RMO below zero or a red ribbon, red bars, and a red arrow. So red ribbon, red bars, red arrow gives you a bearish trade setup. Green ribbon, blue bars, blue arrow gives you a bullish trade setup. And again, on the uh, bearish, bearish trade, you don't need everything happening on the same bar. So this is just an example. This uh, took place... Uh, on October 1st of last year, uh, I just haven't updated this slide, but the concept is is this is the same here. It doesn't really matter, you know, when this happened. Um, but what happens is that you, the expert advisor will provide you with one of these pop-up windows, and it'll it'll give you a little alert language and tell you that something happened on the chart that you need to take a look at. And in this particular case, um, what it's uh, telling us is that the swing trade two just crossed above swing trade three, which generated this blue uh, buy arrow uh, down here. And what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves, okay, we've got a blue buy arrow, but we need a green ribbon and we need blue bars, which are both present. So now we've got a valid trade setup. So to enter that trade, what we're going to do is we're going to enter it one tick above the bar that uh, generated that, that blue arrow. So we're just going to wait for the next bar to appear. And because we can trade RMO on multiple time frames, right, you can do daily charts, so you can... Um, I think most people I know use daily charts, but theoretically, I suppose you'd be d using intraday charts. Uh, whatever the next bar is going to be, you wait for that bar to appear, and what you're watching for is a tick above the, uh, the, the alert bar, the bar where the trade alert was generated. So, and, and the bearish trade setup would be exactly the, the opposite. You're, you're going to wait for one tick below the low of, of that bar. And sometimes it happens in the, on the next bar and sometimes maybe you have to wait two or three bars. Uh, if you don't get the tick above that just means you never get into the trade. So basically what you end up doing is, is you take a look at this bar. Uh, the, the, the day's high was 32.15 it actually closed down at 32.13, but the high was 32.15. So we're going to um, enter this position if the next bar ticks above th at 32.16. So pretty simple. You always want to set a stop loss. And uh, I do a lot of options trading, and I, I teach a lot of options trading over at the Options Club. So we, we trade the RMO using options. And, uh, and even if you use options, you still want to use a stop loss. Um, so the recommended place to put the stop is either going to be right below the low of the prior day's bar or the low of the day preceding that. So you look at, at the last couple of days or the last couple of bars, and uh, whichever one's lower, that's where you're going to put your stop. Uh, alternatively, you could also identify an area of support uh, and set your stop at, at that area of technical support 
that might involve a little bit more risk, uh, but you need to uh, you know adjust for that. In other words, you might trade a little bit smaller position or or make some other accommodation. Um, but that's basically where you'd be setting your your stop. Uh, some basic trade management rules. Um, if you now, if if you get into the trade and then you get, let's say you get a bullish trade and then a red arrow appears, uh, that's not panic time. What that what you need to do there is is you check the primary and the intermediate trends. And the thing to remember is that the the arrows are generated by the moving average crossover, and they don't necessarily reflect a change in trend. So you might get a, a market that extends itself and then pulls back while still maintaining the primary trend. As long as that's happening, a trend trader probably wants to stay with, with the trade. They want to stay long and uh, you don't want to jump out. So what you do is you, you monitor the primary trend. If you start seeing changes in the primary trend, then you might want to uh, make, make some changes. The other uh, thing that happens is you might get a second trigger in the same direction as your trade. So if you're long a position, you get a second blue arrow. Uh, you you want to resist the temptation to increase the size of your position. Uh, instead, what you want to do is you want to use that as an opportunity to either take some profits, move your stop a little bit higher, do something to start protecting and locking in your your uh, the gains that you have in the position. So that's the basic operation of the RMO system. But what we really want to start taking a look at is how can we use the RMO to protect the larger uh, you know, or the bigger picture of our entire equity portfolio. And um, Jeff and I actually talked about this some time back was that uh, the, the RMO had signaled us out of the market pretty much for all the major declines that, that we experienced. And, uh, and, and the real trick to it all was simply paying attention to it. So the underlying philosophy of what we're talking about here today is that we're going to assume, and I, I don't even think you have to assume, I think you can actually look at the majority of stocks and I think it's really the vast majority of stocks, they will follow the broad market. So if the broad market is trending higher, most equities will trend higher with it. And if it's trending lower or selling off, most stocks will head lower. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you're invested in a diversified portfolio, you typically have exposure to the broad market because that's what the broad market is. It's it's a it's a number or diversified uh, collection of, of stocks. Uh, you know, you know, some people don't realize this. They they're surprised, but there there is no such thing as the Dow Jones Industrial 30. There there's no security. That you can buy that's the Dow Jones Industrial 30. It's, it's a hypothetical index. The same is true of the S&P 500. These are just hypothetical indexes. You can't buy a share of the S&P 500. Now there are products like mutual funds and, and ETFs that will try to you know, match the, the price performance of the index, but you can't buy the actual index. So when you buy you know, something like the Spider or a Vanguard uh, index fund, what you're really buying is a diversified portfolio. And it's going to mirror the performance of the broad market. So we want to do our investing and our long-term you know, trading in recognition of what's going on in the broad market. We don't want to ignore what's happening in the bigger picture. And we want something that's objective that's going to allow us to filter out all of the noise, all of the chatter on CNBC, all of the stuff we hear on the radio or read in the newspaper. You know, whether uh, you know, people are 
you know, no matter what blows up or what planes fly into what buildings, we want to have something objective that tells us whether we should be in or out of the market or whether we should be taking some kind of conservative protective action. And, uh, uh, and if we can do that and we can keep ourselves in sync with the broad market trend, the probability that we're going to make money as opposed to lose money will increase rather dramatically. So the question is, what if we use the RMO simply to identify the broad market primary trend and avoid trading against that broad market trend? And we can do this very easily. So what we're going to do is, for the purposes of our discussion here, I selected the S&P 500 um, Depository Receipts ETF, or the SPY, SPY. It approximates or is a proxy for the S&P 500. Now, you got to make a note here. We're not trading the SPY. You could. We're not going to trade the SPY. We're just going to use it as a barometer for the broad market conditions. It's our canary in the coal mine. It's going to tell us if we are experiencing conditions that are potentially dangerous, allowing us to take action before the worst of the storm hits. So if the primary trend of the SPY is bullish, what that means is that we have a green light to aggressively pursue capital appreciation in our portfolio. We can buy stocks. And we don't have to do a lot of stuff to hedge and protect. We can just get long stocks. But if the primary trend of the SPY turns bearish, then we need to take some action. And that action might either be to exit the position or to otherwise protect our capital. So here's a uh, just basic price chart from July and August of this year. This is the, the recent sell-off that we had. Right, and I I remember this one very clearly because it's only a few weeks old, and it wasn't as bad as what we experienced in 2008 or even what we experienced back in 2000, but it was still a pretty good thump. Now, if I get the next slide, okay, so we gapped down on July 27th. That's, that's where the gap came in. And that kind of triggered off this crescendo to the downside. All right, and there, there's our bottom on August 9th. That was a very fast sell-off. So the question is, how did the RMO deal with this? So here's the RMO, same time period. All right. So what I've done here is I've got the the uh, just a regular chart, you know, just the the plain chart side by side with the RMO, and they're both set up for the exact same time period. So we've got a definitive market exit. Here's a definitive market exit. What do I mean by a definitive market exit? Well, we've got a red arrow, we've got red bars, and we've got a red ribbon. And so that is our, our trade alert bar there. And according to the RMO trading rules, we would exit, we would exit one tick below that bar. We would get short the SPY. Now we're not trading the SPY, but if we apply that full set of rules, we would be getting 
out or we would be protecting ourselves no later than July 29th, which is just two days after the, the gap down. Okay, so here's the, uh, the RMO turned uh, bearish on July 29th. Okay, which that is that actually would have been our, our our exit bar right there. Let's see if I can get uh, here we go. So here's what I did is I highlighted in yellow the the uh, the bearish zone here that preceded that market sell-off. And the reason I did that is because this this market sell-off was a nice demonstration of how the RMO is going to protect you but here's a period uh, where the market kind of sagged in sort of a consolidation the RMO turned turned bearish so not every time you know every time this RMO turns bearish it, it doesn't mean that you're you're in for a calamitous drop in prices Right, so it's it, it you know it, it's not a fortune teller, but it is about as close as we're going to get. So you are going to have times when the armo turns bearish, where we don't get that significant drop. And the reason that's important to recognize is you may not want to liquidate your entire stock portfolio every time you get a, a red ribbon. And there's a lot of reasons why you might not want to do that. So let's take a look now at the uh, October 7 market top. This is this is where the financial world was was going to disappear. You know, all the credit markets were going to freeze up, and and uh, you know it was as bad as uh, anyone's ever seen it kind of deal. So we had the, the market top in October of 07. We had the market bottom in March of 2009. All right, so how's the R mode gonna deal with that? So here what I did is I just highlighted the, the red ribbon area and this is, I think, the same time period. Um, but what you can see is during that entire uh, drawdown time, we had, you know, the RMO fluctuated. So we we were getting, you know, these bullish zones interspersed with with the bearish trend. So let's take a little bit different view on that. Okay, so I didn't highlight each little red band here, but I, I highlighted the, the more significant ones. And I approximated that on, on, on the uh, plain chart. So we do, it does pull us out in, let me see if I can get a pen here. All right, so it does pull us out for a part of this, but not all of it. So you, again, you're not going to avoid everything. Um, and where it does have us out is kind of this sideways correction. So you're not really losing a whole lot from being in the market here, but you're not making much either. Now you get in long enough to make a little bit on the upside, but where you really get the benefit of the RMO is avoiding all of this downside movement. And that's, that's where the real money was made or lost in that whole market correction. So if you were on, on the uh, bearish side of, of things, if, if you had the, 
the stomach and the foresight to get short, uh, you did very well, uh, and some people did. Uh, but even if you, you, you're not one to trade to the downside, just knowing enough to either exit the market or protect your capital could have saved you a lot of pain and suffering. So that's another look. Now, let's see if I can get the next slide loaded. Okay. So we don't, what we were seeing there it, on those daily charts is, a, is some whipsaw type action where the RMO is, is going from red to green, back to red, that sort of thing. And, and some people find that distracting and less, not as desirable. And one way to reduce the amount of whipsaw uh, type action is by uh, simply uh, switching time periods. You can go to a longer time period. So here I, I, I'm showing you a weekly chart. And you have a lot, and it's the same time period. It's just weekly bars now. And, and the weekly bars will produce fewer signals because you're looking at a longer time period. Right, so instead of you know, for every five bars you'd get on a daily chart, you're only getting one weekly bar. So you can smooth it by going to a longer time frame. Now, there is no free lunch, and uh, there, there's some drawback involved there. So by shifting time periods, what I've done here is I've taken, let's see, where's my, yeah, I've taken the red, the two red uh, bearish phases. I've just highlighted them over here on the chart. Now, obviously, you missed a lot of the uh, the sell-off, but it's going to be a little bit slower getting you back in to the long side, and it's going to be a little bit slower getting you out on the short side. So you'll get fewer signals with the weekly bars but you'll also be a little bit slower. You won't get out as fast and you won't get in as fast. Which one's better? Well, that depends entirely upon your particular situation and your approach. You know, if you're uh, investing in mutual funds, um, you know, I've got some mutual funds in a uh, 401k plan, for example. I use weekly bars for those. There's a couple reasons I do that, but I really only monitor those those funds you know, every couple of weeks. I, I check the RMO uh, on the broad market pretty much daily, on a, but I only look at the individual funds you know, every couple of weeks, maybe once a month, unless there's something happening in the market from a trend perspective that tells me to go look more often. But I, I use the weekly bars for, for those uh, types of funds, and uh, it tends to work rather well for me. Um, some people might prefer using daily bars, but you're going to be moving in and out of the positions more frequently. And with a mutual fund, they often carry an early redemption fee. And by switching to a monthly bar or a weekly bar, uh, you can avoid that early redemption fee problem. All right, let's see, one more slide. Come. Oh, here I've got a red, red circle here. Uh, let's see if I can get the arrow. Um, this, this is the most recent market correction. This is what we just went through. We're using a weekly bar, and pay attention to the, the ribbon here. On a weekly bar, the RMO is still bullish. So if you go to a weekly bar, you have to understand that there's going to be some volatility, market volatility, that's not going to get filtered out by the RMO. And the reason is, is because it's getting smoothed in with the overall trend. Now, if I drew a trend line here, um, you know, the, the, the trend, the primary trend is still more or less a bullish trend. 
right? Now we've got volatility inside of that trend. Right, we can see the volatility here. And we can see the price volatility here. But that volatility is getting smoothed because of our use of the weekly bars. So now I've talked about the idea that we could exit, you know, we could liquidate our portfolio. But again, a lot of investors are not comfortable going completely to cash. But there are ways we can protect our portfolio. So, you know, if, if we get kind of this indication from the RMO that we might, we might be in store for a downturn, um, we can do things like tightening our stops. And when I say tighten the stops, what I mean is if you're long a stock, move your stop up a little bit. That way if the stock pulls back, we'll get out quicker. Uh, we could buy put options. Uh, put options are uh, options that allow us to sell 100 shares of stock for every option we own at a predefined price. So we could buy puts that let us protect our stock. We could sell call options. Now, call options, uh, we, can, we can sell those against our stock to provide us with a little bit of a cushion. They're not as effective at protecting capital as put options, but you will still outperform to the downside as compared to just owning the stock by itself. We can employ what's called a collar, which involves a simultaneous purchase of a put and a call. And the effect is that we can buy the put option and finance the purchase cost in whole or part by selling the call option. Then there are also the, uh, various hedging strategies that, that you might want to apply to your portfolio. And those can be very, quite varied. Some become very sophisticated. Um, but whenever you hedge something, whether it's by buying puts or doing something else, there's always something that you're giving up. There's always some cost involved. So we may not always want to have all of our positions hedged 100% of the time. And that's where using a tool like RMO starts making some sense because it identifies those periods of time when applying the protection begins making sense. And very often what we're finding is that we get those signals before the worst of the damage is done. So you can still buy puts at a time when they're relatively affordable to purchase or we could put in some other kind of defensive tactic. So what we're getting down to is this idea that we're not really going to even try to time the market and we're not even going to try to uh, trade the market so much for these long-term investment style positions. We just want to know whether we should be on offense or defense. Right? Which, te which team should we put out on the field, our, our offense or our defense? So it's, again, not about trading the spider. It's trying to figure out whether we should be aggressive in getting long equity or whether we should pull the reins back a little bit and get defensive in anticipation of a possible market downturn. Now, I've got a couple links for you guys. Uh, at the Option Club, like I was saying, we, we do a lot with options, um, both on their own and in combination with, with stock strategies. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the RMO, or even if you are familiar but maybe not, you'd like to know a little bit about how you might use it with options, um, 
there's a video course that I'll give you access to at no charge if uh, you go to theoptionclub.com forward slash RMO uh, and everything's in lowercase. Uh, you just put a, if you put an email in, there's a little sign up box there. We'll, I'll give you free access to, to the video course. It's a little over an hour long. And it goes into the trading rules in more detail. Uh, but it also uh, demonstrates some option strategies that I think make some good sense in a trend following context. So, you know, hopefully you guys find that helpful. Um, and uh, for those of you who uh, don't own Metastock, um, you know, they, if, if, you're inclined, if you're inclined to purchase it, um, you know, Jeff has uh, worked something out with Thomson Reuters where uh, you, get, you get kind of a special deal. You get a little bit of a discount on the software, but then they put in a bunch of nice goodies to go along with it that make this, the program a little bit easier to learn and, and a little bit easier to use. So that's the basic concept there, is that we can apply these trend-following principles using a rather effective indicator in the RMO. And what I think Jeff has found, and I, I have found it, is that the RMO has proven very reliable in keeping us out of the worst of the market while putting us on the correct side of the trend. You know, when when we're in these uh, bull trends, but also, you know, if you if you guys like to trade short, it, it gives you kind of the signal when it makes sense to start looking for those bearish trades. So if there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. But I think that's pretty much the uh, presentation.